Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. My name is Oha Cade, I'm a composer, and you are watching B-Side Battles, where I take five B-Sides suggested by you guys, and I listen to them, give them each a brief analysis, and then I rank them in order of preference. Whoever ends up in first place will get a lyrical analysis. The songs that we're going to be checking out today are Jessica, Set Me Free from her latest album Beep Beep, Heart Raider by Triple S, Warning by Day Six, Kiss B by Jae Joon featuring Flausick from the 2013 album Why and EXO Runaway from the album Don't Fight the Feeling. The order that I'm going to listen to these songs has been randomized to keep it fair. This video is going to be edited on YouTube so you will get my analysis and ranking but you won't get the listening portion that will be Patreon exclusive. Also I've learned from the comments that you guys are in favor of a theme for these battles so for the next battle there will be a theme which is magic. So if you're leaving suggestions in the comments or on my Patreon, please suggest songs that you think fit the theme of magic. They could be called magic, magic could be the title, they could evoke magic musically. Anything that comes to mind, that's the theme we're going to go for for next time, so I'm excited about that. Most of these songs have been chosen by my patrons, so I do want to give you a brief overview of how my Patreon works and how my shop works. But if you'd like to skip straight to the battle, there are timestamps in the description. Hello everyone, I'd like to run you through how my Patreon works real quick. For $3 at the mood tier, you get to view all the content. For $5 at the key tier, you will get song reaction opportunities, as well as the ability to submit song suggestions for polls and vote on the polls. The only caveat with the key tier is that none of the song requests are guaranteed, that's where the tempo tier comes in, where you'll always get a guaranteed song request in the rotating queue. Now here's how these tiers work, melody to opus. Melody is for EPs, aria is for albums, and opus is for albums or custom-made playlists by you. And the longer you're subscribed to these tiers, the more in-depth the analysis of your reaction will be. So for example, if you subscribe for one month, the reaction will be casual. If you're subscribed for two months, the reaction will be semi-formal. And if you're subscribed for three months, the reaction will be formal, as in full analysis, full lyrical analysis in depth. These are limited tiers with only five spots per tier, and each tier will have its own rotating queue. Now, if you happen to not be interested in waiting, you can always purchase them in my new shop that I just launched. You can purchase a wide variety of reactions from the shop, from 10 minutes to 30 minutes to an EP reaction, a live set reaction. So if you're interested in supporting, have a look around, see what works for you. But I do want to emphasize that these queues and the spots are wide open. So if you would like to support, get your requests in. Now is a really good time. Thank you so much for listening. But without further ado, let's get into this first song with Jessica's Set Me Free. All right, so this song, I have similar feelings about this song as I do the other song I reacted to from this album, which was Get It, Got It Good, which is that melodically it's very strong and very enjoyable. The melodic lines are really beautiful and flowing and really fun to listen to. I love the tone of her voice. I realized as I was listening to this that she really has a similar tone to Janet Jackson and for a few moments in this song I felt like the way the harmonies were incorporated and the sound of her voice I was really getting Janet Jackson vibes and I don't know if that's because their, their tones are similar vocally or because stylistically this song was inspired by Janet but that was a really uncanny thing that I experienced and I, I like it, it's a very positive thing, I love Janet. I also loved the percussive elements in the dance breakdown. That was a good textural touch that I really enjoyed. You could see me kind of grooving along to that part. Yeah, it, the, overall it's a very cute song. Unfortunately, I feel like the production is kind of weak. The auto-tune and processing on the vocals is way too much. It makes her voice sound harsher than it needs to be. There's a certain polish that the production is missing, which is really unfortunate. It sounds like it needed one more round of finessing, either with the EQ or something. The, the treble in this song, i.e. the high frequencies, are very prominent, and that can be a little grating on the ear and the overall style it was going for it's um again cute very enjoyable light pop bop but it is a very familiar tried and true style hearkening back to something that like 
Avicii would have put out, you know, that style that he sort of innovated, I guess, this sort of very euphoric, happy dance breakdown. You can sort of get that style from it. Cute, but I doubt that this song will be high on the list. So at the moment it is in first place, but uh, once we listen to the next song, we'll see if this song gets bumped down to second or if it will stay in first. Again, very strong, uh, melodically, very fun to listen to. I do love her vocal tone, unfortunate about the vocal production especially. Okay, the next song we have is Heart Raider by Triple S, and what a roster we have here. This song was included at my own discretion. I decided to check out what's come out recently, and this group just put out their debut album, which is called Assembled, I believe? Assembled 24, sorry, because there's 24 girls, right? Yeah, 24 girls in this group. Unprecedented, as far as I know, for a K-pop group. I'm interested. How is the line distribution gonna look here? <laughs> I'm very curious. So yeah, this I just saw that this song is a B-side on the new album. It only came out today. It comes right after the lead single on the, on the track list. So let's see what Triple S has for us today. Okay, okay. Wow. Very interesting, very interesting. I'm so unsure of what to make of this. So, yeah, I, d I did laugh a couple times uh, while listening to this. And it's because, you know what? The, the absolute abundance of different voices, the constant switching from tone to tone, person to person, I think it... It backfires a little bit. It's very hard for your mind to follow. And I know it's we're dealing with all female voices here. So there is some thread that you're able to follow. But for me, I, I could hear the difference in their tones. And it just made for a, an almost comedic listen. The constant switching. And unfortunately, it makes this song feel like a bit of a monstrosity. And I hate to use that word, but... I also use that word because, honestly, the composition and overall atmosphere of the song feels a little bit soulless. It feels like something that was written by, by AI. There's no particular emotion or atmosphere, intentional atmosphere, that I can glean from this song. The beat did have me grooving a couple times. So there are some nice touches in the production. You know, some of the chords, they're kind of they're kind of jazzy and there are some nice percussive elements in this song for sure, but it all feels kind of random and none of the interactions between each part, like the, the sequence of parts doesn't seem to have any rhyme or reason. The vocal lines don't seem to have any direction. The, the, the vocal line at the very end of the chorus made me chuckle a little bit because it, I don't know, it, it, it just doesn't work for me. And since there are 24 girls in this group, it does strike me as sort of a novelty track. And again, I hate to use that word, I'm totally down for a 24 member group, as long as the result is a tasteful and sincere piece of work. This strikes me as a very novelty focused track and I hope that some of the other songs on the album give me better vibes and when I say a better vibe I literally mean any vibe because this even this dance beat it's hard to move to it's very fast and that combined with the quick fire switching between the voices gives a very comedic and funny effect almost a disturbing and uncomfortable effect to me it, it feels like something that is completely unfinished, like a fever dream that I should not be listening to. So very harsh criticism of this song, I know, and maybe I don't get it. Maybe I just don't get it. Again, I'd like to emphasize that I'm not writing off this group. I just think that the execution of this particular song was not very good. And it, it does make me even more eager to hear what else they have going on. So yeah, unfortunately, I'm fairly confident that this song will end up in last place. Yeah, so unfortunately, Heart Raider takes second place there. Jessica holding first place strong. So let's see how the next song fares, which is Day 6 Warning. Let's get right into it. So believe it or not, this is another song that I do have mixed feelings about also. Overall, I think it's a solid track. Uh, fairly safe in terms of of being a very like softly produced rock song 
where really the, the the drums and the guitars did take a back seat for their vocals. So in a sense, it's produced like a pop song. And I would like for the instruments to, to be given more beef in this production. I think their vocal performances on this song were really great. Young K, his singing parts on this song, he really stood out to me on this track. He sounded great. As well as Jay. Jay and Juan Pill, they had a couple of really beautiful falsetto moments that were gorgeous lovely touch to the song because the song as a whole it didn't feel that dynamic i think that there was a nice little bit of dynamics in the verses where the guitars were like strumming a little bit more and the, the drums were a little bit more groovy and i enjoyed the verses very much the chorus i could take or leave what I also did really like is the main riff. The riff that the song opened with, combined with their background harmonies, was a really cool effect. Beautiful part of the song. I think we got a little bit more of it later in the song. So I do really like that part. But one more thing that I wasn't crazy about was the spoken word part by Young K that repeats in the background a little bit. Kind of a weird choice. Feels like the song was kind of rushed in a way. The writing and the recording of it and the production of it. Again, something about it was missing a little bit of something something or polish compared to some other songs I've heard from them. It's definitely not the worst song I've ever heard. And I think that since this song had a nice little bit of variety and some neat moments, good vocal performances, underproduced maybe, but at least it wasn't overproduced, which I think is probably a worse offense. So this song is going in first place, but just barely. So yeah, interesting selection today. None of these songs are totally blowing me away, even though each one has some redeeming qualities. I am feeling the B-sidedness of these B-sides. But of course, the fun of checking out B-sides for these different artists is to look for the gems, because we all know that, you know, most B-sides are B-sides for a reason, and most singles are singles for a reason. Singles are normally very strong. B-sides, normally not as good and they're scattered throughout the album, but there's always a few gems and b-sides, so maybe the last remaining couple of songs can be considered gems, but we'll take them as they come. Here we have Kiss B by Jeju. Let's see. Okay, it's definitely a trend today that I'm being torn about these songs, unsure how I feel about them. The thing that this song has going for it is the detailed arrangement. This is something that the members of TVXQ are very good at in their songs. They always add nice little small touches that you can pay attention to. There was a nice melody in the piano, you know, there, there was harmonies, there was a, a synth pad in the background. There's a lot going on in this song. Although I worry that, again, the execution of it falls a little bit short. It feels uh, lacking a little bit in focus, like maybe Jaejun wasn't sure where the focus should really be. Of course, I think the focus should always be on his voice. But the way the production was distributed, it seemed like the harmonies were very loud and his lead was pushed to the back a little bit underneath the music. On top of that, the featured artist, whose name is Flosik, I'm not sure who Flosik is, but their vocals were very poorly implemented in this song. Like, it sounded like the, the, the whole song was mixed, mastered, finished, and then sent to Flosik, remixed. So we have the whole track finished, and then Flosik's verses over that. So it sounded not very well mixed at all, his parts. So yeah, because there's an overall disconnect in how all of the parts fit together, it makes the song feel like a bit of a half-hearted effort. And that's paired with the fact that I don't think the song itself is that good. Like, the the chorus isn't that catchy. I can't really remember any particular melody from this song. Unfortunately, I do think it is going to the bottom of this list a little bit. Another thing I did like about it is how the snare was incorporated. Like, the snare became a little bit heavier during parts of the chorus and towards the end of the song, which helped the build a little bit. So yes, what I do like about this song is the little intricate details that are included, just to keep your ear entertained. I just wish that those details had been focused and mixed with a little bit more care, because the end result feels a bit messy and thrown together. So Kiss Me by Jaejung is going in third. Very interesting today how there's, there's nothing I'm totally very fond of here. Now we do have one more song which might save the day and that 
is uh, Run Away by Axel. In a way, I'm kind of hoping that I don't like this song because I feel like if I do like this song and it goes in first place, I'm going to look very bad for putting Axel in first place two times in a row. But, you know, that's the look of the draw, I suppose. But I am joking, of course. However, I truly feel about this song will affect where it gets put on the list. There's just a little bit more context I was given on this track where... There's only seven members on this one. Chen and Suho were enlisted. Let's see what's going on with Runaway. All right. Okay, just for the purposes of this battle, I am sort of going to disregard the final tail end there, the sort of outro, because it sort of, I, I guess, functions as more of a transition or an interlude to the next track. I do have mixed feelings on this song, but they are positive mixed feelings. Yeah, I guess I'm lying. It's mostly positive feelings with a couple of mixed feelings. So I'll get my mixed feelings out of the way before I move on to my praise for this track. This song does rely a little bit on some pop tracks trends and tropes that I'm not crazy about particularly. For example, the uh, run away, eh, 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 eh. That is such a tropey, eh, eh, eh. I guess that was sort of started by Rihanna. Rihanna innovated that whole thing and it was cool when she did it, but then everyone started doing it and it ended up in so many songs and it's found its way into this one. It's that trope has gotten its grubby hands on this song and that is unfortunate for me as I, I find that to be a bit grating. I am a little tired of hearing it. So the chorus I think is weak but that said everything else about this song I found to be quite beautifully crafted. The atmosphere is so unique. It's got a very how do I describe this? I just love the the reverb and the echo on the drum production in the verses. It, it's giving a, like a very ancient quality, like a very old emotion that we can all relate to. The vocal performances were so good. There was a little too much autotune on Chanyol's voice, I noticed. But apart from that, like I loved the vocal melodies, some beautiful runs. Every member got a great moment to shine. There was some cute guitar plucking in the pre-choruses and overall it's just you know a beautifully crafted and sincere track apart from the somewhat generic chorus that is not horrible just not something that stands out to me i think that this song is, is strong and has a lot going for it so i gotta put it in first place guys i'm sorry <laughs> Yep, so the mighty Axel have come through again. Two wins in a row in the B-side battle. Come on, guys. What are we going to do to stop this from happening again? <laughs> you got to bring your A game with these B-side suggestions, all right? Even this Exo song has its faults. We need more gems. Yeah, this, this, this was not the most gem-filled B-side battle, but... You know, to me, I think that makes it kind of fun. It's also fun to talk about not only the stuff we love, but also the stuff that we think could have been executed better. So yeah, in summary, EXO, strong, great production, beautifully crafted atmosphere. Just thought the chorus was a bit of a dud. Day six, warning. This was a really solid song and had a lot of really cool parts to it with great vocal performances. I guess there was just, it was missing something more distinct and perhaps more punchy production to bump it up to first place. Jessica Set Me Free is somewhat of a safe and somewhat generic song. However, the vocal performance was really strong and it had some really beautiful melodies, a really fun dance drop. And these aspects made up for the fact that some of the production was a little overdone. Jejun Kiss B, some really nice detailed musical ideas that were included here and there in this song that had me intrigued, but the overall culmination of it felt a bit messy and the incorporation of flow six verses was not well done unfortunately and triple s heart raider again <laughs> a bit of a monstrosity to me and you know i i say that i say that word sort of half in jest i i say it with love i have nothing personally against this group um but i do hope that the 24 voices can be done justice by combining them in more creative ways. The harmonic possibilities of a 24 member group, it just blows my mind. And Heart Raider does not fulfill the potential of 
what this group can possibly do. So yeah, that's about it for uh, today's B-side battle. If you'd like to stick around, we are going to do a lyrical analysis of Runaway since it is the winner. But if you're not sticking around, again, I'm open to suggestions for the theme of magic for the next B-side battle. Again, becoming a patron is the best way to get your suggestion in. But I am checking the comments and if there's anything that becomes quite popular in the comments or gets a lot of upvotes, that will have a chance of getting into. Okay, the lyrics for Runaway go, let's wait a second, wait a second now. We need ventilation. Enduring unconditionally isn't the answer. No, 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 no. A prison without bars. Little by little, it'll swallow me completely, starting from everything. The strange eyes reflected in the mirror, the voice that is haunting my mind. I'm secretly getting used to it too. Even the senses in my body are getting dull. So let's run away. Take me anywhere. Let's run away. I'm gone. I'm gone. Be free. Okay, it sounds like it's about being really bored or in some sort of soul-crushing position where you are fantasizing about running away. It could be something, it could be about, you know, a job or a relationship. It says let's run away. So it could be also about maybe a couple who are not able to express their love in their current environment and want to run away for some reason, sort of a Romeo and Juliet situation. Next line, like a lie in a dry terrain, like a flower blooming is a miracle, we endured the pitch black darkness with all of our might, yeah. It takes courage to step on today and stand up again. This cold rain that wets my entire body, this feeling of freedom in my soul, I feel like I've been born again. It's a fresh start for you and I. It could be something to do with the fandom also, um, perhaps celebrating the fact with the fandom that they have crossed over into some new era or something that wasn't working for them before. I might be missing something here because I know that there is sort of a fantastical lore in Exo's lyrics too. By the way, uh, some of the imagery in these lyrics is really doing it for me. I like the fact that they're a little bit more intricately written than usual. Last line goes, won't leave any trace, no, so let's run away. Interesting. I don't think I have anything else to add in terms of my supposed meaning. It's about getting away from something, obviously. The song is called Runaway. It's about getting away from something that isn't working for you, moving on to the next stage and feeling free, the freedom in his soul, as he said. I like the line, enduring unconditionally isn't the answer. I like that. It's like, you know, if something isn't working for you, don't endure it, fix it. A prison without bars, little by little, it'll swallow me completely. These are powerful lines that I'm really into. The strange eyes reflected in the mirror, the voice that is haunting my mind. Each of these lines, it, it sparks a very striking image, it tells a very particular story, very focused. A deserving winner for today's battle, and I'm happy about that. So that's about it from me for today for the Speedside battle. Congratulations to EXO again on winning. I promise it's not by design. The song was just the best. What can I do? Nothing I can do. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment, hit the notification bell, and I'll talk to you guys again soon. Thanks so much and take care.